our friend Enos, who's a tour manager for Bad Cop. Um, she recently started her Team Mom merch store that sells merch for, you know, Bad Cop Make War, just added the last gang and ships all throughout Europe. So that's pretty exciting. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, so do you want to go ahead and just give like a background, like how'd you get started and stuff like that growing up? Like started TMing or started uh, Team Mom merch or? Uh, TMing. TMing. Um, I, I think we have to, oh, I have to start a little bit early because I'm a mat, um, Bad Cop, Bad Cop in 2015 at Punk Rock Bowling. And I just walked over to the merch and said hi. And then I offered whenever they're in Berlin, um, I can take them on a sightseeing tour or something like this. And a few months later that happened. They had their first European tour and we met here and had two fantastic days um strolling around having fun and i played two shows in berlin at that time and the year after i came to california for a couple of weeks and they yeah they just asked me if i want to do some merch and i'm like sure why not <laughs> and so i started to um do merch on the european tours and um, a few dates in the US as well. And then uh, I think, yeah, two and a half years ago, so 2018 summer, they, they had like two tours in Europe. And on the first tour, um, it was Ben as their TM like the years before. And he got an offer for TMing another tour at the same time as the second Bad Cop tour was planned. And they just asked me if I would do this. I'm like, okay, well, maybe, yes, <laughs> okay. And, uh, so, how, so, yeah, he started like this. So, but I TM'd the first time in my life, like almost 20 years ago, 18 years ago. Oh, a band from New York. <laughs> Which was a disaster, and I wouldn't do this for a, quite a long time. <laughs> Was TM something that like you wanted to do originally or kind of get into or did it just kind of fall like you kind of just fell into <laughs> it? <laughs> I just fell in it. Yeah. <laughs> but it, I really love it. It's super fun. Nice. Nice. Who like how did you get started? Because you said you did it for a band in New York. So how did that? A, a New York band and um, on their European tour like 2002, I guess, yeah, 2002, oh. so 18 years ago. Um, and the same, I was doing a lot of photography, concert photography back in the days and um, analog photos. And I moved to Berlin, I just gave my photos to any kind of band or booking agency. And one booking agent was like, are you interested in like going on tour or something like sure why not I, I just started studying here sure I spent some time abroad <laughs> so, um, and then I, I met those guys and yeah we, were, we had like 10 days tour and, uh, without any mobile phones um, GPS navigation so just drove with maps <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and it was pretty intense and I was way too young and um yeah it was it was tough and I decided not to do this for a living anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's crazy especially back then too like you don't have like the gps on your phones or like you can't just pull <laughs> I couldn't imagine doing it with a map. a map. You had a map. I know. That's like, I have no sense of direction, too. And no. I just, I'd get so lost. I got lost. I, I, right there. <laughs> right there. And it's like, no, where are we? Like, we can't figure <laughs> Oh, my gosh. That's, that's crazy. I know. Like, I, 
lived in Warsaw for a little bit and I still remember my phone had died one day and it was like when I had first like moved there and I had no clue where I was and so I spent the entire day just trying to find something I recognized or like a bus number or a sign or something to find my way back home. <laughs> I walked like 12 miles that day. <laughs> oh my God. You found your way back, right? <laughs> Eventually, yeah. I, I was sore for the next few days. <laughs> I did find my way back though. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Crazy. Um, we do like want to talk about the last bad cop tour a little bit just because, I mean, you guys were racing against the clock and the borders shutting down and everything. And it was pretty chaotic from what we've heard, like from the girls and stuff and you and Tom going back and trying to make it as they're shutting down the countries, you know, dropping off the van and stuff. It sounded pretty crazy. Yeah, it was. <laughs> well, it, it didn't feel crazy at that time. Well, it, it was kind of crazy, but for me it was, um how to say i'm like i was so focused on bringing everything in order <laughs> like um get the, the vans to the airport um sort out the van situation um sort out tom getting back to his place to paris where we've already been and he was so cool to drive the van, one of the vans back to Berlin with me. And I drove the other van from McWar. Mm -hmm. And then he had to take a train on the next day. And it was actually the last train that passed the border to France. So. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. You all were lucky. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Paris was the last show wasn't it right. yeah we had um so officially planned were like 20 shows and we made 12 so oh my god that's all. yeah but the the last eight one were like the super awesome ones with like sold out berlin show and sold out hamburg and sold out cologne and yeah so yeah. the real big <laughs> Yeah, it sounded like it was a really good tour. Like they were selling out a number of places and it was going yeah. so well. And then all of a sudden it's just like, no, you guys got to come home. Right. I swear we were wanting them over here. Like, like, are they going to make it over? Are they going to make it over? We were like waiting, like holding our breaths, like as they're announcing, like, okay, we're going to play this. And we're like, are, are they okay to play this? <laughs> are they like, shouldn't you be like on a plane? Like. Yeah. yeah it's crazy I know I was like I remember I was messaging Myra like a few hours before they announced that they were st gonna start closing everything and she said like you know that they were worried about getting back in if they were gonna be let back in and I was like you should be fine like they're not really doing anything as far as the travel and then a few hours later they announced they're shutting everything down and I'm like oh crap <laughs> yeah but I actually I was never worried that they are not able to go back because like the US is known for a country who brings back all their citizens like in any crisis yeah so um and we were um, I think in a good position at the moment we decided to quit the tour because you still get flights like the borders were still open um and but it was a like really short-term decision so everything changed every 20 minutes so i was on the phone practically all day mm -hmm. and get information from different points and so yeah yeah but i was not afraid that they never go back to the us <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, th I think they would have made it eventually it would have been interesting to see what would have happened. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know how, how it happened, um, how your government um, was acting when actually the borders were closed. Um, if other, like tourists, if they um, like return to your country. So, because Germany, 
Germany or um, booked whole flights to bring back all the tourists. Like we had a lot of tourists in, in um, Egypt and I don't know, Spain probably. So um, yeah, it was just a long um, logistical issue to like identify tourists all over the world because Germans travel like everywhere. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to find if if there's like a country like in in Spain or in um, Egypt where like thousands of tourists of German tourists are or I don't know Malaysia or <laughs> anywhere else but like twenty. So you have to take care of a few thousand and those twenty. So yeah, as far as I know, long. everyone. I mean, everyone came back. American. Yeah, you know, they brought everyone back. And they just had a quarantine, and that was pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. Simple. <laughs> um, so let's talk about your store, because that's going pretty well, too. How did that kind of get started? Because that had been in talks for a good while, wasn't it? Sorry? It, it was kind of in talks for a bit before you kind of started it. Yeah, I, I, um, so when it was foreseeable that at some point the tour is going to be cut off, mm -hmm. um, I had a talk to the bands and I like offered them to take over their merchandise so then they don't have to take care of all these boxes. I know a lot of boxes. Um, and I said, I'm going to open an, an online shop for that merch and like um, help you, help me, help everyone. Um, and then I came back to Berlin and lived with a couple of boxes in my living room for a couple of days. And then I uh, reached out to my coworker here. This is a shared office. If I can use um, our cellar, which is right here, and try and clean, um, if I can like build up my business here, and she was like, "Sure, I'm I'm actually at home with my kids, and uh, the schools are closed, so uh, the office is all yours." So I started this business here, and it took a long time to go online um, because, yeah, it was the first um, lockdown and uh, like I'm pretty sure everyone felt it it was strange it was frightening and at a certain point you're not really motivated to do anything it's like we're all gonna die so <laughs> <laughs> what should you do like drink all day um, and then I and it of course I started with the fun stuff like um taking great pictures um doing right descriptions of every item and like have like a plan about the name like I, it started from nothing and then at um, the time moved on and we're like god damn it we really have to keep going and like go online at one point and then it was like, like okay but terms and conditions god damn it um um or like all these security things like data security and stuff like this i never thought of, <laughs> thought about this and this is really important in germany and this is really important in the european union so i have to fi find a lawyer who like helped me out with that and um after all it happened on the 30th of may sorry i started on the end of may Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. So you started essentially with like the merch that was left over from the tour. It was just the leftovers in the beginning. And then um, I got partner of the officially, uh, official distributor for records um, from FedRec in Europe. So I can get all records I want. Mm -hmm. And 
I ordered, of course, the new Bad Cop, Bad Cop album <laughs> and uh, added a special edition of shirts and tote bags. And um, yeah, and it, it's getting more and more and like um, adding more products, adding more bands. Yeah, and you added the last gang. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so exciting <laughs> yeah it was it was for me it was so exciting i i think for everyone at the last game too so and yeah i'm really happy yeah um they decided to work with me and um i think we have a nice bundle of merch um for the start it, could be or will be more um, and I'm hoping to find more bands that are into sustainable and fair merchandise so yeah let's um let's actually talk about that a little bit because yeah. you can use like is it recycled products like for the merch no, like um, sustainability and stuff yeah so um the main the main values of team on merch are fairness, um, diversity, and sustainability. So, um, and that means if we come to fairness, um, every product is produced by people who get a fair payment. Um, so everyone involved, which is not only the people who like produce the shirts, also the printers, um, me, <laughs> um, everyone who's, who's delivering um, the packages, stuff like this. Um, so the shirts are fair trade shirts. Mm -hmm. That means um, even workers' rights are respected. And I support other small businesses that are producing or um, refining the products in Berlin. Um, yeah, so that's about fairness. Sustainability means that um, the products are with a really uh, environmentally friendly produced and resource saving. So uh, the shirts are only cotton, 100% organic cotton, uh, same as um, the tote bags, the fabric from the tote bag. Um, so no plastic at any point. So I, I don't have, I try to avoid plastic as much <laughs> as I can. So nothing is wrapped in plastic at all. Um, yeah. And like all my, the, all the production and also my office work or all distribution is um, trying to be eco as much as possible. So that means my, my packaging is recycled, um, stuff like this. And my office, I don't print. I don't print out any uh, receipts or stuff like this. So everything is online, less paper. Nice. What, yeah. that's great. <laughs> like what, cause I mean, we don't really see a lot of that here. It's not like talked about as much, you know, especially with, you know, bands selling their merch and stuff. So how can we do that here in a sense? Like what small steps can people take for that? Mm, yeah, I know it's not um, that this is something unusually just in the US, to be clear. Yeah. Um, even in Europe, a lot of bands are like, using guild on heavy cotton or fruit of the loom or yeah. <laughs> whatever. There it is. Um, so this is, an, this is an issue which I find really strange because it's, um, especially in a punk rock scene, um, you have values. You have values like do it yourself. You have values like feminism and respect for people's rights and um, against any kind of oppression or um, yeah exploitation of people you know and still though um, a lot of merchandise is produced that way um, if you look into regular fashion um, 
sustainable fashion or fair fashion is more known. It's still a small part of this system, but it's more known. Um, and if you want to get involved in stuff like this or just to know more about topics like this, I really recommend like two page, two home pages. Um, the first one is fashionrevolution.org and the other one is cleanclothes.org. I can write it in the chat afterwards if you want. To. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, and these are like, um, so this deals with fairness and sustainability in fashion in general. But of course, merchandise is part of fashion, mm -hmm. even if punk rockers um, define themselves as not, not being a fashion. Um, but still, you wear clothes and you have a statement with that. And uh, you support bands that have a certain statement. And sometimes, it, for me personally, I it doesn't make a lot of sense to stay on stage and talk about um, empowerment <laughs> and selling merch that is exploiting people. Yeah. So, and I think what really helps about this is like learn about stuff, questioning stuff, questioning your consumption. Um, the whole economical system you live in, like always buying more or de define yourself about buying stuff. Like if I'm happy, I buy something. If I'm sad, I buy something. So like this connection is, for me, is really hard. Yeah. <laughs> to, like I can buy something because it's, it's beautiful and it's worth. Mm -hmm. And the birth has to be, it has to be a value in everything I buy. So, yeah. in the best place, it makes not only me happy, but everyone else who was involved. So, yeah. And I think like that mentality can be applied to any area, you know, in and out of punk, you know, feminism, you know, these marginalized groups. I mean, we were talking when we, first launched our platform and started posting about how you wanted to do a photo shoot with all different types of people modeling your merch and stuff. And it's like, that can be so small, but it represents so much more. You know, if someone sees someone like them, you know, modeling these clothes, it's gonna bring confidence to them, you know, because right. they feel included and represented. And we talk a lot about you know, how we can make the scene just more representative of all these different people. And we do think it's grown and we think people are becoming more aware of, you know, that representation, but I think we still have a long way to go in that sense. And, you know, understanding that you can't just turn it on and off, you know, like if you say you're inclusive or you say you're this or that or whatever, you have to be that all the time. You right. know? And I think that can also be traced back to the sustainability aspect, you know? And Absolutely. It, it's all yeah. encompassing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I totally forgot about the diversity of T Mom <laughs> is um, that, and actually, this, this is because, like, I think two customers reached out to me. Um, because I had in the beginning just a leftover merch from tour and we had just a size range from extra small to extra large. And two customers were like, hey, um, sorry. And like, we really loved your merch, but um, you just have up to XL and we are a little bit outside that range. Um, can you imagine to like, expand the range of your merch or is it any any possible to reprint um on a bigger size and i thought about it i'm like god damn it i'm such an idiot you know um of course on tour it's really hard to have 
sizes for everyone at all time because like the space is limited. Um, but final online shop is more than like it should be totally normal to have more than just extra small to extra large. So I decided um, to offer step by step every print we do up to 5XL. Okay. And um, or if anyone finds something in the shop which is not at his or hers um, size, I can reprint it without any extra cost if we already print again. So um, and I, I don't see also um, the need to make a different price on the sizes. So every size has the same price. It doesn't matter if you are extra small or 5XL, the shirt is the same price. Um, and I don't believe in gender products. So I would never have um, girly shirts or uh, <laughs> boy shorts. <laughs> so it's, it's a shirt, is a short, is a tote bag. So a shirt has no gender. So exactly. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, gonna have, I'm gonna have like fitted ones but i'm not telling yeah this is just for boys or this is just for girls you know it's yeah we're seeing a lot of that too like stores are carrying like gender gender neutral clothing yeah and so that's pretty exciting to see too and i think having that is going to open up so many more options for people who don't fit, you know, within a certain box or, you know, anything. That's great. That's something not so usual in uh, Germany or Europe in general. So I, I see something like this in the U S more and it's great. So, yeah, I think, I mean, in living in, Warsaw versus like the US. I think the US is a little more open to that kind of stuff and a little more welcoming in a sense. I, I know there's certain places obviously here that still don't welcome that stuff and you know are very closed minded when it comes to it. But I think you're gonna find a lot more people who do believe in that and who do understand how important it is and how it does give people confidence and makes them feel represented just having you know a shirt that doesn't have a label on it you know men or women right yeah. or a different price yeah i've seen that in a lot of like online shops <laughs> even in the punk and hardcore scene yeah. and you have like the same print on the same fabric and the the one is just like the woman clothes or girly shirt and then there's a like man shirt or it sometimes it's funny it's unisex man and woman <laughs> um so and always or not always but most of the time the the girly or women's clothes are more expensive mm -hmm. it's like what <laughs> Yeah, like, I don't stop doing this. Understand that I know, especially with like the bigger sizes too. Like having it be like a few extra dollars more is a little insulting in a sense. Yeah, like some people can't help the way they're built. And if right. they they need these sizes, how are you going to make them pay more for it? It's not their fault, you know. Yeah. Well, to be fair, um, I pay more for the bigger ones because it's more fabric mm -hmm. but it's not on me to give this to the customer yeah. like if you buy shoes for example it doesn't matter if you have like a, a, a six or an 11 you know it's the same price and should be the same for shirts and it, this is um um just my own risk and i have to like count with it and for me it's good to have a bigger size range because people really reach out for me and thank me that I offer them the opportunity to have a great merch. Yeah. A fair merch and a great one. <laughs> <laughs> and a funny one. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, that's that's great and really important for people because when they see that, you know, you're carrying these options for them and you know, they do have somewhere to go, especially with, you know, punk clothing, like it was very like you had to be a certain size in a sense. Like they didn't really carry a whole lot of options when they first started producing, you know, the merch fat or the punk fashion, you know. Um, yeah. but now we're seeing a lot more you know the plus size clothing the gender neutral clothing you know stuff like that is starting to pop up a little bit more so it's exciting to see that's right yeah was it my <laughs> <laughs> um let's talk a little bit about just like the inclusivity in a sense um i don't know how it is in europe versus like the u.s in terms of that i like i see a lot more in europe about like the acceptance of people especially in recent years which has been great but i i think i'm looking more like within the punk community because i mean we we did touch on like representation and how certain areas in the u.s are a little bit more welcoming but i'm just kind of wondering like how it is in europe and how about, um, about what again sorry um just like how the punk scene is out there like in terms of like inclusivity and like seeing different types of people um hmm it depends like um what i've ex seen in the u.s on shows um and like there's a, a, a lot of differences between the European punk or hardcore scene and the, and the US one. Um, like we, we love the US bands and we um, love to have them here and host them very well. Um, but I believe that European punk scene is a little bit more political, is a little bit more activist um especially if you you're not focused on us punk but also like the european punk music scene like all the our bands and musicians are in general a little bit more activists um and i think that is the reason that we always have the discourse to question ourselves, our behavior, um, acceptance of other people in the scene. But this is not happen happening everywhere. So um, I grew up in the late 90s, early 2000s with punk and hardcore. And mainly I was into hardcore at that time. And it was absolutely not common to have women in the mosh pit um, or they were always underrepresented. Um, and even on stage or as musicians, it was always like, oh my God, have you seen a chick on stage? <laughs> and like, um, so you always, or you, you have machos and you have dudes everywhere so um but it's changing i i just hope that um of course we still have a lot of tough boys and um all these tough crew uh especially in the hardcore scene but yeah it's changing they have to accept they're not alone anymore and um, also, I think the acceptance of transgender people or just not your average gender stereotypes on like a big, di big discussions about fat Mike wearing dresses and skirts, you know, like, I don't fucking care what he wears, like, yeah, he's, he's funny, he, I like his music, it's, he can wear whatever, you know. Uh, he wants like I'm that doesn't make it better or worse so yeah, you're like well, why does this matter <laughs> like if he's wearing, <laughs> yeah. like, he's wearing a dress like, yeah. 
He has amazing legs, to be fair. <laughs> it's true. This is true. I was kind of shocked. <laughs> no. Like, he really does, though. I'm like, all right. <laughs> no wonder it's a show him off, of course. <laughs> and if he's got them, flaunt him. Exactly. Well, yeah, like, doesn't change the music. Like, if somebody is wearing, like, if, you know, guys up there wearing a dress or. Yeah. That kind of thing. And even if the voices are changing, um, uh, like Laura Jane, um, but it's still the music, and it's, it's it's a person, it's a human, and you have to respect their decision. It's not your decision to make. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. Like it shouldn't matter who they are, or what they're wearing, or any of that. Yeah. I mean, we're all here for the music, and yeah. all care if about the music. music, right? Like if it's good music, it doesn't matter. Like who's up there like I don't know just yeah but I think that also falls back on like the individual person and kind of what their views are because I mean seeing Fat Mike in a dress might mean you know that he's less than or like soft or you know like there's these different stereotypes and stigmas that people can associate with that too so it, it really is dependent on that person and kind of opening up their minds to accepting that there's nothing that a person wears or that a person does that will make them less than, you know, wearing a dress on stage doesn't mean that they're soft or, you know, any of that. It just, it's something they want to do because they like doing it and they're comfortable doing it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I think I went through all of my questions. Kanan, did you have anything? Um, I just want to know how you got the name Team Mom merch. Like, where did that? <sighs> yeah. Um, I know it's really, like, I struggle with that name right now a bit, but I won't change it. <laughs> um, because it's, like, I, when I'm on the phone with someone and I'm, like, trying to tell them the homepage, I'm like, T-M-O-M -M minus merch. Um, especially if they're German and even merch is not common German name or, or any not, not every German knows the name or the English word of merchandise so but anyways uh, T-Mom is you know uh, tour manager is short TM like everywhere, everywhere in the music scene um, TM it's the tour manager and when I started TMing back up I was asking them what they really want me to do. Um, and they were like, okay, yeah, you have to get up early or be in time and make sure there's always enough food and um, like take care of us, take the money and stuff like this. And we're like, so I, you're actually looking for a mom, right? <laughs> And we're like, yeah, be our mom, like be the tour mom. So it's a tour mom, it's tour mom. That's so great. in short, it's team mom. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and it, it started like two years ago on, on our first tour. And it like goes through, like I, I send them messages with love, team mom. I think, I think that's how Jenny introduced me to you. Like, <laughs> She said that mom. like you were their tour mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get them out of bed, get them a coffee and a blanket. And... <laughs> that is a mom. <laughs> That's a mom, right? That's Wi-Fi. There's the toilet. Catering is over there. Beyond <laughs> that time. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good night. Make up call. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. I, I'm just talking about it. Miss, like, I miss touring with those guys. It's so amazing. They're great. They're great people. Yeah. You were, you were going to come out here for punk rock bowling, weren't you? Like this year? No. This year? Like every year. <laughs> I oh, think I've been there the it. first Please. time in. 14, 2014, and I only missed like two years and that, I wow. think. So I was, I was at um, Punk Rock 
falling yeah i think 2019 the last time Probably. Well, well, <laughs> oh no, no, not 2019. But I was last year in October um, for the Bad Cop and Barstool Preachers tour, yeah. and I think we uh, met uh, Alexis. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And in San Francisco. Yes, and rock the ship and everything. Mm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was a year ago that was a year ago what <laughs> that was, oh my gosh that tour was like yeah. the best tour though that was so surreal kind of yeah it's been exactly a year i've been in the u.s and i'm usually there one at least once a year and i i really miss it i really love california and my friends all over there and it's yeah. pretty tough yeah it's been such a crazy year. Yeah. Hopefully, we see some change. <laughs> so we can I start so having too. shows again and traveling and seeing our friends. We'll see. <laughs> fingers crossed. Yes. yes, fingers crossed. I think. I think. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll start to see some change next year with the transition in the White House. <laughs> Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, even, even for your like if you come back to the topic of sustainability and like for me it's really good to see that your next president will um come to the to paris um i forgot the name to be again about um like climate climate action yeah and to fully acceptance of the fact that climate change is real real yes that's, and, a, whole, <laughs> and that's a whole nother conversation yeah. like i don't understand how people just don't accept it the evidence is right there but they still say it's not real fake news <laughs> that's what they say. actually i just read uh, an interesting article about it why this is just such a big topic in the US um, because mo mostly it's about lobbyism. Um, you have really hard and conservative big lobby groups financed through the oil and gas sector. Um, and those people provide politicians information because politicians usually don't have the time to deal with all these topics and they need these think tanks um, to like find decisions. And if these think tanks or, or groups are like paid and not scientists, like true scientists, yeah. this, is, this is happening. Oh so, yeah, absolutely. Like, like the cigarette companies in the in the 60s and 70s they still said um cigarettes are not uh causing cancer and stuff like this they had fake signs um yeah like decrees on that so. yeah same as climate change <laughs> mind-blowing <laughs> definitely oh my gosh that's crazy is there anything you else? Live, right? You personally, you okay? I'm sorry, what? Are you personally fine right now in general? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what we're doing, like, this is a really good distraction. Like, I have a lot of different things going on, and they all yeah. kind of like yeah. <laughs> to help yeah. me not focus on like impending doom. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this i mean we had been talk, talking about starting this for a while and kind of seeing our friends start stuff i mean paul started his podcast you know and everyone's kind of starting their own projects and we're like you know what let's just see what happens we're gonna start it <laughs> and it's doing great like you hit the 500 fans within like two weeks yeah yeah i think wow it, is, was it a month today is yeah, it a month today month that we started our Instagram? <laughs> I think our website's only been up for two weeks, maybe yeah. three, two. I don't know. That's awesome. That's yeah. really, really cool. 
Yeah. And I'm really excited. And actually, I uh, checked out your previous podcast and I, um, I haven't checked out the band Warriors before. And they're really great. Yeah, yeah, they're really good. Lauren was great, you know. Yeah, so that was really, really exciting. Cool so far, yeah, yeah, we've we've gotten a lot of overwhelming support, and I don't think we were prepared for that. <laughs> I mean, even the people <laughs> yes to like the interviews and stuff. We've gotten some pretty big people that were. I mean, we were shocked. We were like, wait, they said yes? Like, why? <laughs> but it's all, it's, all been, it's all been great, and everyone's been super supportive, and yeah, it's been going good so far, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm going to check in every time and maybe find the new, new bands for Team On Merch as well. So. Yeah, we're covering we're covering a lot of um so far we've gotten some riot girl like greats, I guess. Like we've we've gotten people who have been involved I, I can't say who it is. <laughs> I'm trying to like find the words, but we we've gotten some people who who started the movement basically, started the riot girl movement, which I mean they were incredibly influential yeah we haven't <laughs> we haven't said anything about that but um we i we won't say who um but we've also gotten you know some smaller bands who i mean we we know them because we listen to them but you know they're really all about what we're trying to promote and you know they really carry the values that we're looking for and people that we want to have featured on our you know whatever it is zoom article yeah. whatever it is <laughs> whatever kind of platform or anything that we want to yeah yeah on. yeah and everyone's been great i mean we were just on a call when was that was that thursday with ramona it was tuesday 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 yeah, yeah and that one was a lot of fun no. <laughs> yeah yeah it, it's been good we're trying to like come up because we we obviously want to cover like bad cop and like our friends you know people that we know but we're trying to find like new ways of covering them we don't want to like, interview them. We don't want to, like just like interview them and like ask them questions because like we already like know them so it's like what we're trying to come up with something different to do and like brainstorm different ideas and yeah, we think we have oh, a couple. You find something cool. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple of ideas. We have, yeah. we have a couple ideas. We were like, what if we did like, a, like the British Bake Off with like Jenny, like over Zoom, like try and you know, like, <laughs> just like all these like crazy ideas. We were like trying to like come up with stuff. Even like in October, we we're like maybe we can do like pumpkin carving with like some, <laughs> <laughs> with just something, yeah. Just something different that's not like run of the mill like oh you put up the ride what's it like having an album in quarantine or like, like everybody <laughs> like else every is, other band that's come out with an album in 2020 <laughs> something different but yeah it's been going good we have some fun stuff planned and that we're gonna be releasing in the next couple weeks so it'll be good i'm pretty excited yeah oh, thanks <laughs> and if you know any band who might are interested in merch in Europe should just hit me up definitely absolutely do you want to um give us like your like website and socials yeah plug them in um, um should I I text it in the in the um um you can say it and then I'll um because we're gonna create like an article with just like a blurb and then um post the YouTube and then at the bottom post like all your socials and stuff see if I can no okay um it's tmom minus merch dot com t m o m minus merch dot com cool sustainable fair diversity feminist merch in Europe awesome I love and, that um, like if at one point in life we all 
go back to touring, um, I decided to like give U.S. bands the chance to like get a, a merch management out of my shop as well. So, oh wow, help them uh, like ordering stuff, addresses is always really important, shipment and stuff and stuff. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The COVID future. So. Yes, in the future when everything is safe again and we can actually Absolutely. have our music yeah. and enjoy it. Okay. <laughs> so 2022, everybody? Yes, <laughs> that's 2022. Is that what we're aiming for? God, I, I mean, we're going to lock down again. So, I mean. <laughs> I know. God. Yeah. You are in lockdown? Yeah. Or announced yeah. yesterday. Well, this week, I guess. Yeah, we went back to like the worst tier. So. <laughs> yeah, so California yeah, we'll down sucks. <laughs> but we'll, you know, but we gotta gotta do something to to get people to stop hanging out together and stop like thinking yeah. that it's a big deal and. Yeah. yeah. Like we have, a, they call it a light lockdown, in November in Germany. So um, practically. Uh, restaurants are closed. Um, they only do take away food and um, like sports clubs and, and stuff like this is closed. But most of the um, just shops are regularly open and businesses and schools. And um, but the numbers are not like going down at any point. So this is and we are in week three right now. So, yeah, let's see how this change or not i know and with the holidays coming up too it's a little scary because i mean we yeah. know people are going to get together and stuff yeah, right I mean, people aren't going to listen and they're going to be like i'm seeing my family i don't care like mm -hmm. yeah. might kill your family we'll see <laughs> seriously like i just i want people to take it seriously but it's like yeah i'm fine with takeout and i'm fine with like staying home and it's like yeah. You know, there's like just don't be selfish. Like just, you know, do your part and yeah. You know, people just. Uh, well, I think too because we've been at it for so long. It's our way of life now. As terrible as it sounds. I was watching. A, I was watching a movie last night that came out like last year, and they were like party at so and so's house, and I was like, that's not social distancing. <laughs> <Like, laughs> you know, it's like weird hearing it now, or like even seeing stuff where it's like a big crowd and you're like oh my god that's too many people like, like oh this is private right. <laughs> like they can be together COVID, yes. <laughs> that's what, like i have i mean tiktok i don't i posted a couple tiktoks and now i don't care to do anything with it but i'll still go on and like watch stuff and like people have to put a disclaimer on some video saying like taken pre-covid <laughs> like this is like groups of people and everyone's like why aren't you guys wearing masks and they're like no this was filmed like before everything and I go back and look at pictures from like February and January. It's like we had no idea. <laughs> like, those, pictures, yeah. I know, those pictures of Alex's bar, those group shots. I'm like, oh my god, we're all just like there, like hugging each other. Like there's so many people. Sharing drinks, hugging each other. Yeah. <laughs> there's like that meme too, where it's like, I can't believe I used to share my water bottle with 15 people at shows. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe I. I sold merch at the beginning of a pandemic, like being at the merch, everyone talking in your face and like everyone is drunk. How much is that? <laughs> we have that in the next lot. <laughs> like, I know, like you guys were like in it. That's what's like mind blowing. Like looking back on it, like it was like, it was like right on your heels and you know, like. It's so yeah, I, but it's it was everywhere. Like in the U.S., the numbers were rising as well. So it was okay. not like even all these closing borders. It didn't change the fact that it was already there. So what what everything changed was the kind of how to deal with it. And like um, Germany was was in the beginning pretty good um because we had a really strict lockdown and like everything was closed for weeks and um we had the lowest numbers um or 
one of the countries with the lowest numbers uh, during the summer and that um, that made people be selfish and ignorant and like I want to party I want to go on vacation and people flew on vacation and like why just stop you know um, crazy. and now we are back in our mess so mm -hmm. like, that's what happened here too like people they went like lighter and then everyone was like let's go hang out yeah. and, I know yeah and now it's like things these cases are rising so fast but it almost doesn't feel like it because people are just kind of disregarding it like there's no sense of urgency like that there was at the beginning when like things were like starting to go crazy oh man such such a mess but hopefully we start to see some change soon yeah just everyone stay safe stay home wear a mask keep distance be good yeah. I was like, we, I was like we, have, we, yeah, we've been doing this the whole time, so it's like, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. yeah, it's it's hard when it's partly like out of your control. You can be doing all the right steps, but if someone else isn't, then it kind of cancels you out. Depending yeah. on what like for your grade in a group project. Seriously, yeah, it's <laughs> a group project, and there's always that one person slacking off, not doing their part. <laughs> That's what we're doing, yes. It's like, I did my job. I got an A. <laughs> like... Oh my gosh, so crazy. I know, like, my last show, well, the last thing that we went together was the Pee Wee show yeah. in February. But then I went to a show March 14th. I think it was the day that the girls flew back. The day. At Alex's bar. And it was the same day that Long Beach had their first confirmed like covid positive person and so they cut the crowd in half and like me and my friend like we knew it was going to be the last show for a while so we like we didn't care who the band was we were like you know what, let's just go so we went and they cut the crowd in half and like the energy was so strange i like i brought in hand sanitizer because i was like i don't know what is going on <laughs> but like it was so crazy like we saw friends but it was like it was weird like no one really knew what to do because all this stuff was going on but we were still trying to act like it was normal like in 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 alex's bars the show's going on <laughs> so, yeah. yeah it was pretty intense That's yeah awesome. i think we all learned a lot this year absolutely yeah. Where was where did we see Bad Cop? Like the last show was in February. What D Piazza's, wasn't it? Yes, that was it. And I'm just thinking about how many people they packed into that like bar. <laughs> it was just like You couldn't even move. <laughs> just so many people. Like, just oh, thinking oh, about oh, that. Oh. <laughs> it's like it's crazy. I know. Like even seeing people now, like I think they were they were like the first or one of the first people, Myron and Stacy, when we went to the beach. And it was just so weird because it was like, I wanted to like go and like give him a hug, like right off the bat. But I was like, you know what? No, like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, no, wild. it's just like elbow, elbow bump. Or whatever. <laughs> me, me and Stacy did the elbow tap. And then we, and then we hugged. We we're like, we can't do the elbow tap. We're fine. We know we're fine. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> crazy well thank you so much for coming on here and doing this we really thank appreciate you. it thank yeah. you thanks yeah. for asking me thanks for having me and giving me that platform for my business and um the things i care about hey,